Hello, in this video I'm going to show you beginning to end how to do one of these like super cute alpaca hats. Now, this video does not have the chart for the, the for the design, the alpacas, the intarsia, feral, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have that with it. Uh, the PDF, the direct link to the PDF is in the description below. Now, a couple things I want to go over before we get into making this hat. Now, this hat is actually made with alpaca yarn. This is all I have left after making two hats. Uh, I was actually really happy about it. But it comes in, like, hank form like this. So you'll want to, like, wa ball it up or wind it up or whatever yourself. Um, it's about 200 yards. As you can see, I put it on the spool winder and wound mine up. But each one is about 200 yards, and I got a a a hank of the it's a like a cream color it's not it's a, like a off white and I got one of the black now the black is more of like a size two yarn the white is like a size three so it is a little thicker like after making these hats the white one is thicker than the black one is the PDF does come with two different graphs there's this graph right here where you just have the heart in the front and a heart in the back and then there's this one, where you've just got sets of yep, alpacas with hearts in the middle. Now, throughout this video, this is going to be the one that you're going to see me showing you how to make. But, of course, as you'll see, I ran out of the white yarn before I did my cast off, and I accidentally deleted the video where I showed you how to do the brim. <laughs> so, i got to redo the brim, but I'm going to do it in the black instead of the white but you can use either color you want it really doesn't matter all this is is a chain cast one you make a slip knot oh and I'm using the 120 peg fine gauge one four it's a one fourth inch gauge fine gauge knitting loom from premium knitting looms .com. Um, I absolutely love this just because of the design, the texture and the design I can get from it. And the fact I can use a size three yarn and make something that looks awesome. Okay, so super stretchy cast, I mean, chain cast on. Let me zoom this in. There we go. Okie dokie. You got this. See, it's a slip knot. Whatever peg you're starting with. Pull that through and you tighten it. Take your extra, like your tail, put back there, which you'll just weave that in later. This loop you just made, you put around the next one and then you pull. Put around the next one, then you pull. Pull around the next one, and each time you're bringing that new yarn through. I do have other videos I'll show you better how to do this. There you go. You will do this all the way around. When you get to your last peg, instead of, I've noticed, okay, I did it two ways. As you can see, this is because of my tension. The heart doesn't, like we got a little bit of a gap there and there. That is due to my tension that I knit with. With this one, it's off more. The big difference I did is when I got to my, on this black one, when I got back to my pink peg, like I normally do, I put my loose loop on that pink peg and it had two loops on it. I suggest actually putting it on the peg before and they don't actually connect so you'll have a spot in between. I noticed that it will go a little smoother that way. For the brim itself, it is just a single pearl, a single rib stitch. And it's about an inch long. I think I had like what seven, eight rows here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like seven or eight rows for the brim. Pearl stitch is done. It's okay. You e wrap one. Take your bottom over the top. The next one you purl, which to purl. You lift, hook down through the loop, working yarn under. Pull the working yarn up. You've got this new loop that you transfer out. You take your old loop off and put that new one on. So then you will e-wrap a peg and then you will do that again. And each row 
your pegs that are e-wrapped are going to be e-wrapped your pegs that are purled are going to be purled for the entire brim once the brim's done then you start in with your chart which you can make your own chart or you can purchase the one that i made it's up to you but i will show you everything you need to know uh to do these all right um just do your brim about an inch long um e-wrap one pearl one all the way around each row take your bottom loops over the top of course and then take and it's about it looks like i did about eight rows to make it an inch i'm going to show you how to do uh, the design in the hat now which i've actually this is a secondary chart that is available in the pdf it's a little different it's where the alpacas are facing each other and there's hearts in between them so it's just a few sets of alpacas like that um which when you print it out it'll be kind of like this when you print it i mean i have a few corrections to make on this one a little boo-boos of my own but that's how it'll be uh you can do one of two things you can cut each individual piece out and just track the rows that way which if you do that i suggest marking your loom uh with okay so i'll show you how i mark the loom this one is peg one to peg 50. so the pink one's peg one and i have peg 50 marked over here the second one is peg 51 to peg 99. so of course the one beside 50 is going to be 51. it's just how math works um this is peg 99. the last one the small one is going to be peg 100 to peg 120 which there we go and I also put like a little dot every 10 pegs just in case I kind of get lost where I'm at I'll be able to be like okay well there's peg 70 and I'm over here I've got three left to it you know just things like that just to help you keep track of it because uh just it's not hard to do to the sorry it's not hard to do the design the hardest part is just keeping track of where you are at um, I've done a few rows so you can kind of see how it starts to form and when it first starts the design first starts showing you're going to see all these little floats well some of these if I stretch this out you can see the little floats the white right there they're going to be stretched out and you're going to see them really good but when you're done they won't be that noticeable okay so let me see what row am I on I am on row eight I just finished row eight, so I'm on row nine. So I'm going to start. I'll just show you on this first stretch. A couple things you can do if you are worried about losing track of where you're at. You can take and mark. Okay, I'm on row nine. So this row right here, underneath the paper is the row I'm doing so peg one to peg seven is going to be white peg eight to peg 16 will be black and then peg 17 18 will be white 19 through 23 will be black and you just rotate back and forth let me hold this up hopefully I can hold this to where you can see what I'm doing good because it's very awkward to hold this but you can see the row before is a great indicator of what I'm doing because I already know I don't have to sit there and count because I know that my row before the black was right here this one the black's going to start one peg out now you want to look where your yarn ended up the previous row which when you are first starting, all you do is just take the black yarn, wrap around, and just bring it right in. Here is the cast on where I started the black because my very first row, all I did was when I did my rib stitch brim, which I showed you how to do that, I did it about an inch long, which was seven, eight rows. And then I automatically switched and did one row black and then another row of white. And now we are doing the design so here we go okay we can see the black was left back here um and what these 
the pieces of string in this back section, let me kind of zoom in, zoom in. Those are called floats. You want them as short as possible because if you have them really long, then it can be something that you can snag um, or it will loosen the project up and you'll have these big gaps in it. So you don't want either of those. So what we're going to do is I tie mine in every three, which all that is is we twist this. Okay, so we don't want the floats too long, which is that's what's called. Our first seven stitches here are going to be white. I don't like to run them any more than three. So before we start this, I'm going to take the black yarn, twist it under the white, and then twist it again. And then I'm going to wrap one, two, three pegs. Then we will twist the black again. All that does is that holds it in with that. And once the hat's on and it's not stretched out anymore, that won't be noticeable at all. Now, I try not to let the floats go any more than three pegs, but this one right here, I'm on my second. If I do the third, then I'll have one white and then I'll be going into black. So I'm gonna do two instead. If you want, you can switch, you can kind of tie it up there every two pegs if you want, it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't matter which way you twist it either. Now this peg is black. I do suggest when you're switching colors like this to put the color you're working with on top because that kind of holds this and locks that in place. Which we got, two, oops. It's easier for me to hold it up this way and show you. So we got three. I'm just gonna twist that under. Got three more. I'm gonna twist it the other way so my yarn doesn't get all tangled up while I'm trying to work with it. I'm gonna, and there we go. So this will just go on top and I can completely let go of the black and it's going to stay there. See, I only got two white. I'm going to put the black one on top. Then I got one, two, three. We're going to twist it. Four and five. So that's all there is to it. You just follow the chart. And when you get to your row 50, which I've got marked here, you would switch to the next peg, and the next, you would switch to the next page and just follow that along on row nine as well and do that for your following page and that will put you back at your start. Uh, just do this until the chart is done. Once the chart is complete, all you do is cut the white yarn, let it hang there, leave you know a few inches so you can weave that in later and then just go right back in. Sorry, I said that backwards. On this one, I cut the white and went straight back into the black. For this one, I'm gonna cut the black yarn and go straight right into the white. And you just keep e-wrapping just like you have been until the body of the hat with a ruler measured like this will measure about seven inches long. Then we will do a decreased crown cast off and add our pack. Okay. Let's see, here's the second chart. Now you will notice that just depending on the thickness of the yarn, the way you knit, when you're done, you can stretch this all out. But you might notice, see how I can stretch it, you can see kind of like little darker lines. That's actually pretty normal for this style of knitting. Um, once you sit and stretch it out, those will blend in a lot better. It's easier to see them on the white as opposed to the black. As you see the black one, they all blend in pretty good. I mean, you can see a few spots, but if you stretch it, you're still gonna be able to see them. Kinda. <laughs> all right, so this hat I measured, I think eight inches long, yeah. It's right about eight inches long, which I'm holding the ruler up where the yarn is and just letting it hang down naturally without pulling on it or anything. And it's pretty much right at eight inches. You know, if I pull it, I can make it down to like eight and a half. It's just normal, it's right at about eight inches. Uh, this one right here I did at seven. The reason I did this one at eight is because this one 
It's actually about a perfect fit, but my problem is I, if I wear my hair in a ponytail, um, it makes it a little bulky and it actually uh, will, it doesn't want to cover my ears if my hair's in a ponytail. So this one's a little longer so that I can wear it with my hair however I want. This is a cute design. You can even do, just make it, you know, 10 inches long if you want it to be kind of a slouchy hat. So now we are at our point where we can do our uh, our cast off. Well, not our cast off, our decrease. And to do the decrease for the crown, what we do is you can see where your uh, hat, it's already, you still have it marked the five places. Now I've already started this with some of them. What you're gonna do is your marked pegs, you're gonna be taking the yarn off the marked, marked peg and moving it over one. You can move it either way. It doesn't matter, just make sure whatever way you use, you do all of them the same. No, I didn't do this one. And there is a special note about this because this is gonna be kind of tight. See, it doesn't wanna pull up. So I actually have to take and kind of push these up. That is just because my tension was too tight. Good thing these pegs have been to them. What you really wanna do is move it over the exact same way it was wrapped on that but it's very hard and if you completely unwrap it that's gonna be a little loose so I take the loop and I wrap it the opposite direction oh, let's see if I can get that over there there we go hard to do while the loom's sitting like this see I twisted it the opposite direction and put it on there if you do your tension enough to where you could put it on there just as is, then that's perfect. That will help with the tension so much better. Okay, so after you go around, you'll have five empty pegs. And you'll have five pegs with two loops on them. What you do at this point is you just start and you e-wrap. Your empty pegs, you skip. But you e-wrap everything else on the loom until you get back to your last peg, which will, oops, so you get back to this peg. Go ahead and do that. Take your bottom loops over the top, and then I'll show you the next step to the decrease. Now on the pegs that have the extra loop on them, treat those as one and put both loops over the top. First row is done on the decrease. Now what we need to do is... It's easier before you even push the loops down to go ahead and start. Now what we're going to be doing is our end goal is to have every other peg on the entire loom empty. So now this was the first peg. You took it off and you moved it to this one. And now you e-wrapped all around, took the bottom is over the top. You skipped your empty pegs when you e-wrapped. And so now everything has one loop on it. Now this time you can go either way. You can go left or right of your empty peg and you want to skip a peg and then take a peg and move it over. I really hope that made sense. So now you will have that peg you done your first round. So you skip one. Here's your second peg you're doing your second round. As you can see there's the you keep moving whichever way you move the yarn over. You do that every single row so that it all um, looks, it all matches up. And I've got one, of, I left this one over here to show you, so I've got this one empty. I could either go this way and move this one over this way or this way, which it would, if I was doing it that way, it would be this way since this one I moved this way. You wanna make sure you always move them in the same direction. Or I can move over one from this one, which is what I did in this situation. You take that off. Now, if your tension's good enough and you can move it over just like that as it's wrapped, that's fine. What a lot of people want to do is they want to let it kind of unwrap and move it over. But you want it to have a little bit of a twist in it to help with that tension. So, oops, if twisting it the one way is too much, move it and twist it in the opposite direction. See if I can get this on there without having to lay it flat so you guys can see. There we go. 
See, I twisted it in the opposite direction, so it just wasn't the loop untwisted and moved over. Um, now here, I'll kind of show you, because this will have a bit of, there will be kind of like lines. You can see right here, you can kind of see my finger through. That was where a decrease was. Right here, a little thinner spot. But this all cinches up at the top, and it's just taking a lot of the bulk out of it, because your decrease is only going to be about this much of the hat. So it's all going to lay pretty good anyway, and you're not going to notice. Like you can see right here, that was where I did a decrease. And you can kind of see it goes up like this, because the rows, this was one of my original decreases, and then each row, you can see, kind of like a space in between them where you don't see that down here. But this is at the top and you're not stretching that part out. So that's gonna be perfectly fine. I really like this cast off even though it does have that feature to it. Uh, it just has a nice appearance. So now you'll go around and you will push all your pegs down, all the loops down. You will e-wrap everything. You always skip your empty pegs. You'll take the bottom over the top. Your next time, if you're going in the same direction I am, this will be the peg that you'll move over. Then this will be the peg that you move over. And you're going to keep doing that each. So every time you will be emptying five pegs. Since this is in five sections. Uh, just keep doing this method until you are down to every other peg is empty. Then I will show you how to cast off at that point. Um, but it's just simple. You have a decrease row an e-wrap row, a decrease row, an e-wrap row, and you just do that until, like I said a few times, every other peg is empty. Then you will do just a pull string cast off, which I'll go over that in a moment. Okay, well, um, <laughs> I'm about five rows from having all my decreases done, and I'm obviously not going to have enough yarn to do it, so I'm just going to stop there and go ahead and do the cast off, uh, but of course you want to do it until you have Every other peg on the loom is empty like it's showing right on this spot. Now to do the cast off, if you're using a pure fiber yarn to do your cast off, then you want to be very careful because it is a little more delicate. But I'm just going to use a piece of scrap yarn because it's really not going to be seen. It's going to be just up at the top underneath uh, the palm. So what you do... I could start anywhere I guess Just take your yarn if you're doing a stronger piece just run it through because we're just doing a regular pull string cast off at this point oops maybe I should have anchored that let's try that again Pull that because we don't need the whole thing and I'll wrap it around but you can go ahead and take the pegs off the loom as you pull the yarn through and that's all you're going to do is just go around pull the yarn through every peg take them off the loom and then you'll pull the top tight And you are basically done. But before I finish that, I'm going to show you how we can do the little palms here. And I wanted some white. I could have gotten a couple more rows out of this, but I wanted there to be some white in the palm on the top. I like the clover pom pom makers. You can use whatever you want, though. Um, Put that knot out. There we go. Which I think I'm going to do a little spot of it white and then I'll do the rest of it in black. We'll see how that turns out. Maybe it'll look kind of polka dotted. I don't know. We will see. I don't want this whole side. I just want one little spot here done in the white. And we'll go up to about 
half of this side. Okay. I add the black in. And you wrap until the side <laughs> is full. I'm trying to do this kind of fast. You want it to be even all the way across. Normally I wouldn't have done it quite this full, but I wanted that white to only be on one little part of it. Tighten that up. Now, the black here will be this whole side. So I can even this out a little better, go all the way down and back until it's thick. Just keep going. This is like a, the black is more of a, almost a size two yarn. I want it to be a little thicker. All right, that looks about good. So you close that up, and now I gotta find my scissors. So now, oops, now we will take scissors, cut that, and put it all together. All right, found my scissors. So now we just take which I like to kind of fold over the yarn that, like the extra yarn, because then it'll cut, cut it even. All right, now I'm actually going to cut a little piece of this because this is stronger. For this part, just take and you tie the string. You want, it, you want it to be nice and tight. get to where I think I've got it really tight and then do a second knot to lock it in and then at this point you can open this up that's done put that over to the side got a couple strands a little longer right there and here's my palm <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure how it'd turn out, but yep, there it is. Okay, so finish doing your cast off, take everything off, and then I'll show you how to okay, add Okay, it's off the loom. I got the string here, which I don't need all this. I'm going to cut some of this extra string that's less for me to mess with. Which, here's where you could see where I was doing the decrease, and it would have just continued going like that and you would had kind of shapes like that all the way around but this isn't really going to mess it up it's just not going to be the design isn't going to continue okay and it makes the top a little more bulky but for this right here you want to flip the hat inside out have your strings Make sure the string for the pom-pom is out too. And I'm just gonna kinda tie that and 
kind of push on it because you want that as tight as you can get it. So you don't want any holes there. There. I'm going to double knot it. But now to hook this in. Now the palm, I made this one pretty thick, so you might want to kind of flatten out the bottom part of the palm a little bit and pull that up there really tight. And I just actually tie it in. There we go. Tie it in with that. And you can see there's, if I would have continued with the cast off, that would have been completely closed. But you can see there's kind of like a little tiny hole there, but that's perfectly fine. It's not going to mess anything up because you got that palm on top. I'm just making sure I knot this. This one's for me, so I'm knotting it like super extra good. And because I don't really want to weave those down through, you don't want those to show, and I'm cutting them. I'm leaving a little bit of string there. Now we've got some strings hanging off of this, which what you can do is just take a crochet hook. Kind of run them through a little bit because the way we added them in, they're not going to come undone. Just weave them through a little bit and then just cut them. But I cut them with just a little bit hanging out because then when it stretches, you can see there it kind of blends down in a little more. Now for this one, you see, kind of want to follow, uh, I'm going to pull it up through the stitch next to it. See that made that a little more even. Take it through the next one where it's kind of fa facing down. You can do these ha this part however you want. This is just how I'm doing it. Oh, nope, I don't want to go through that. But you just want to go through just one stitch at a time when you're weaving this down through. That way it's not noticeable on the outside. But for this, you don't want it near the cuff. So I'm bringing it up to this stuff up here, up to the intarsia part, or the, I'm still learning some of these terms, fair isle, intarsia, it's all the same to me, okay, got those in, which they'll stretch out, and here is our hat, how cute is that, as you can see, now, if you do this just one stitch at a time, instead of doing a whole row and then taking your bottom over the top, then you won't have this seam here. And all this will blend in better. But there's the hats. I do hope this video is helpful. Any questions or comments, please leave in the comments section below. Um, if you haven't already, I do suggest you subscribe to my channel. Um, I do at least one video a week. So thank you so much for watching. And enjoy.